All right, so there is Luxray and there is Jess. Let's go ahead and update the scoreboards in the mean between time. Predictions, Cherry. Hmm. I think that Luxray, I think that honestly, depending on whoever he plays, I think that he is a strong showing. I can't remember, I think it was Lomomo, so I don't want to say that he was playing Krom, but I think his Falco, his, his DK, and his Luxray has a, oh no, he has a um, Incinerator. I think all three will be all right. I think that the toughest matchup is definitely going to be like that uh, DK Luigi. So I don't think we'll be seeing that tonight. And I think Falco is probably going to be the way he goes. So as long as Jest decides to either go Luigi or um, like, I think stage is going to be a, a much like debated topic of whether or not this match is going to like decide that. Because a lot of times you just see like P PS2, 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 or small yeah. battlefield, small <laughs> battlefield, small battlefield. And like some players just have to take another second to realize, hey, battlefield might be a good choice, man. Town City's looking nice today, like, and I, there it is, that's the uh, PT and the Falco. I think this is a good idea, because both players know that the other one is considering that main character, whatever it may be. So, for, um, Luxury, he is very much considering that Luigi is a threat, and that's why he's not playing a heavy. And Jess is not playing Luigi, because he does not want to deal with Falco laser. Mm. <laughs> it's oppressive. And so, we are seeing PS2, but... We're, let's see. I wonder how this will go. I think that what Jess needs to do to win this is stay Squirtle, have trust in the fact that you're a small, hard-to-hit character who, while may not living long, you have that armored side B, you have really nice ways of racking up damage with your throws, with your tilts, with everything. And all you have to do is just keep moving and continue to hit them. I don't think Ivasaur will have much of a say in this matchup, considering that the Reflector, as well as how big of a body he is and how slow he moves, is not going to be very helpful. And I think Charizard is an even worse pick because it literally just makes him get comboed as much as Luigi would combo DK. But we're seeing the switch to Ivysaur as he gets those upper percents. Let's see, how does he get out of this? Ivysaur, uh, for, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, fun fact, he has one of the worst ledge hang animations in the game. And pretty much every character has a different ledge hang there, as you see Falco is holding on with his hand. And even then, the hitbox, the hurtbox they have, is also very much different depending on what kind of character you are. Especially mm. depending on like how they hold the ledge. So like, just because Gandalf is bigger than Ivasaur, he holds on to with just the tips of his fingers, Got and it, it makes right. it much easier for him to avoid damage compared to Ivasaur, who holds on with his mouth. So like half his body is draping over That's the ledge, and makes it point, very easy yeah. to get him hit. So sometimes we're seeing ooh nice wave just using that DI, but. Luxray, being the player we know he is, consistently getting those kills, following up with that fair, really good stuff. But, got yeah, mentioned that, Jess did take first stock. Even though I said that Ivysaur was going to be a bad pick, like, it kind of worked out. The, the switching over time kind of worked out really well. Let's see. Going for that charge up smash again. Lux spot dodging the uh, return from Jess. And I think that that's something that we've kind of seen become a bit of a bad habit for Luxray in a lot of matchups. Not sure why he started to do it, or maybe I'm just noticing a bit more, but he has been going for a lot of those like hard read F smashes at ledge. Yeah. And Falco, I think that one reason you may be doing it is Falco's F smash. It travels very far compared to a lot of like forward smashes. Similar to like Ivysaur and Ganondorf's, like you go from like one side of the stage and your body just gets so big. So it kind of just covers a lot of like ground. But once people start to get aware of that over time, it's gonna be really hard for them to kind of worry about it in the same way. So I think we might be seeing that high level of adjustment coming out from Jess and others tonight. But Jess, the commanding lead here, gotta be careful. Nice shield coming out. That ledge is so dangerous with Ivysaur here. Not gonna kill yet. Goes for the up B. Lux knows it. Does not go go up too hard. Oh, no edge guard coming out. Tries to go for that read again. Nice with the jab. Again. Nice use of that nair. What will he get? Goes for Charizard. Oh, goes for that down air. Does not get it. Oh no, that's that's unfortunate. 
he went, he was trying to get the read on it, and unfortunately he did not get that with that Flare Blitz. And now we're going to be seeing Ivasaur switch, and he's going to get combat to 30 because we have a Max Rage Falco, and he switches back to Charizard. I don't know. I feel like he's at this high of a percent that um, if you're playing Squirtle, Squirtle's back throw has enough oomph on it to where it will get the kill at this point. Yeah. And you're also much easier a target to get around all of these hitboxes from Luxray, so I think that Jess is starting to figure that out. He has switched to Squirtle finally, but still down a stock, getting hit another F smash to the face. And look at that, Lux is still going for them. And he's got the multi jab as well. Be careful. Oh, and the back is gonna come out. Fully charged max rage. Lux rate, 200 percent pretty much. Back air is just for his troubles. Ooh, I'm on your side, Einstein. <laughs> yeah, I think that, like, the few times, like, we see Jess really conditioning him to watch out for the sword smash to the point where, you know, look at this, Jess, like, literally just stays stuck at this, like, platform here because he knows that this one little spot in front of him is safe, and the one time he didn't see Jet, uh, Luxray charging it, he tries to approach. And that's when Luxray said, nah, I'm about, I'm gonna hit you with this. <laughs> and he goes for that, that kick right to the face. Yeah, definitely so, trains really good conditioning. Then, then switches up. No, you're 100% right on that. Let's see, GG's Phil. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have some uh, results coming from the match between Phil, um, Titan Killer, and Solidus Hedgehog. We'll see that in just a second. Luxray up one nothing in this best two out of three set. Um, winner goes on to winner's finals. Let's see. Just Doki tossing out. He's going to let's go to small battlefield. Looks like that's going to be the stage we're going to see on coming up next. Yeah, that's understandable. I think that he's just still has a couple things to work on with his PT. Um, different things than last time though, because I think that what he needs to kind of work on now is using his characters in unison with each other. And pretty much PTs kind of, they all can use each of their characters a little differently at different times. But like there are times when you definitely share their matchups where you definitely should be trying to use a specific type of character. And now I think that just like, he has a combo game down for all three when they're useful. But now it's just picking Squirtle when he, you need to avoid things or picking Squirtle when you need a back throw or like picking out so when you just need a spike or Charizard when you need a super crazy read. Whereas now he's just going back to that comfort pick with Luigi, trying to see what he can do against this Falco. And I think that's also like, he just wants a bit better of a straight a stage presence against this Falco. Gotcha. He may have to deal with the laser, and we already have seen Falco with Luxray throwing out a couple of them here and there. But even then, I think that Jess may feel a bit more comfortable trying to like weave it in and out of them. And for something like that to happen, uh, rather than trying to fight it all on the side of the, the stage. We're seeing Lux answer right back. These lasers. Mm. And that's it, yeah. There we go. Not a backup nope. on um, score. Yeah, no jumper. Just makes it pretty easy for Lux to kind of worry about that stock. But, I wonder what we'll be seeing out here. For this next stock, we're already seeing just up by about 50%. And I don't know, I just think that, um, let's see here. Ooh, nice Nair coming out. They're rising there. Oh! Oh my goodness, and the misfire coming out, the supercharge going out and taking that stock. Orange Jesus is on just side today. As he's up pretty much a whole stock now, and Luxray is gonna have to do some catch up to try and make it back into this game. You're just going for that up there. Nice jab to get him off stage. Goes for that down smash again. 
uses that grab to get off of him, get up, attacks it. He's left without a jump. Finally gets back to my cheer. Uh, Jess just really doing well to weave in and out of these, and we're seeing Jess, or uh, Luxray, finally starting to go for these types of smash attack reads, and just none of these things are connecting. And there it is! Oh, really, really hard to read with that down smash. Hit me with the dance moves. That was such a good pause on that too. And I think that kind of comes back to what I was talking about just in other matches. It was just like, the way he waits, and the way he like kind of forces people to react is something that's a really good way to punish somebody in those situations. Cause like, especially earlier in that game, he did kind of, ex he did kind of run onto Lux's body as he was like not tacking. Cause he would go for like a dash attack read it. And then he would just get up attack and it would just punish just instantly. Mm. And that time we saw Jess wait he would do the gap attack, and then Jess knew, all right, time to hit it. And so he just went for that down smash, and it hit perfectly. So yeah, it's a really good read on his part, too, for that second game. So I wonder what we'll be seeing for game three. Well, you know, you got to be curious with this guy, you know, because Luxray can <laughs> say, oh, yeah, man, I guess I'll finally play somebody that I know, or maybe not. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. We'll see. Looks like they are agreeing to go to Final Destination, which ought to be pretty hot to see in just a second. What's going on for all of the people that are here? We have 1,750 followers. You know, the other day I was begging to try to get us past 1,500, man. So super excited to have all of the brand new viewers and whatnot. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into the match because we did get that character switch. Yeah, we got the double character switch here. We're seeing that the, uh, this kind of happened earlier too with uh, Phil and Swag was that they both are trying to kind of read each other. And I think that this kind of is in favor of um, Jess Doki for this one. I think that if Jess is able to be like, all right, I want, well, even then, like he doesn't have to worry about laser, right? So that makes playing as Ivasaur even more like comfortable. It's DK. So you're able to just hit him with these really big moves fairly easily. And even at the highest end, like if you want to decide for whatever reason to play, uh, uh, I almost said Bowser, Charizard. DK, like it's heavy versus heavy action. So like you're pretty much both at some sort of an advantage or disadvantage for that one. And we're having seen the switch to episode. And there it is. Ooh. That's the reason why that's so crazy. Is that that big old down air can spike. And for unfortunate characters like DK where they do have to recover horizontally. It can be really damaging to their recovery. I don't know. Are we Jess doing a really that? great job Upset. right now. Yeah, no. He's up a stock right now. Got his heaviest character out at the right time. And it seems like yeah. he's really making all of the right decisions, you know, with what he can do. But then we go, there's Lux Ray. Yeah. The really hard read, knowing that his mash would be hard enough and then even then force him to go for the tech check a lot of times we've seen Luxor or Lamomo go for that down throw so far off stage that it makes a lot of people just accept yeah I'm not going to be back from this so they don't even try and it kind of trips you up so I think there that was a really good mix up for him just like for our game let's see this is a lot, a lot closer than it looked a second ago yeah and I mean he's going to make a dip right here wow. I mean how do you do that how do you trail the entire time and then go, and I'm getting ready to turn it around in two moves. Yeah. Oh. Now we are knotted up at 0-0 zero, zero in an explosive match right now. Yeah, what a fast paced game. Going for the stash attacks. Ooh, going for that smash, these tilts. Ooh, oh! Look at that. <laughs> why and that's what I mean, like, oh, that's gonna hurt. Just, just really kind of stealing that with those F tilts. 
And like sometimes that's all it means is like that's all, that, that's all you need. Like just a little small thing like that. Cause like you're at the edge there, you're in a really high pressure situation. And I what I believe happened there was that Luxray this thought that when he was that guy, he'd be able to shield at least one of these, right? And he was gonna roll through. And all of a sudden, he pushes shield as he gets hit off, and he's the air dodge comes out, and he just falls, and it's just super unfortunate, because like, it's last game, last stock, like, man, I think that we'll be seeing a Luxury coming out for Blood and Mount Loser's side. Yeah.